Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Brian Canlis. I am joined tonight by Joel McHale on a Zoom call, which I'm super stoked about. Hey, uh, just let me just explain briefly. I know this was last minute and super crazy. This is the second to last week of Canlis Community College. Uh, this week is our last week of class. Next week, we launched the citywide scavenger hunt for some big prizes, which is fun. And uh, Joel, I should tell you, when we first dreamed up this idea of Camelus Community College, um, you were the, you were our unicorn. You were the one where we're like, okay, well, like he's the he's the godfather of community college. Uh, sure, you're famous now for card sharks and so many other things, but like, I mean, yeah, right. Uh, but you know, we we when, when we were first endorsed, I don't know if you saw the video. Uh, with a resounding okay. endorsement from Bill Gates. Uh, what people don't understand is we were just using him to get to you. And um, <laughs> when you heard about the college and you thought it was fun and you being a Seattle guy, we were like, all right, what if we could figure out a time to get Joel into a class as a visiting guest professor? Um, mm. And so here we are. You are a kind of, not really, but almost Seattle expert. Yeah, I, well, boy, anything up to about 1996, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. So, I, so the, the goal tonight is I want to talk a little bit about what your Seattle experience. I'm going to have mm -hmm. a couple quiz show type questions. I think it'll be super fun yeah. about not only Seattle, but maybe some community stuff in there which there may, I may or may not be a, a fan of. And then at the end, we have, so my brother is over there on a laptop monitoring the chat feed, and for people can ask questions. At the end, we'll ask some questions from the audience. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, I'm in. I'm ready. Mark's in. So again. Right, now, when you say audience, do you mean your employee lounge that you're in right now? No, I, I mean the people watching on YouTube live right now. Wow. I'm sorry that I'm slightly late to it. I, I blame, I blame a lot of things. I blame COVID. That's it. <laughs> that's a, that's like the easy out. But yeah. All right. Okay. All right. I blame herpes. I... <laughs> sorry. Uh, well, that's fair. Uh, thank you so much. It's yeah. flattering. Oh, it's no. also sad that your inspiration is uh, uh, from something that I was on, uh, and I'll take it. And it, to get. To use Bill Gates to get to me, that's like going like, we're going to buy a Ferrari to end up with a Yugo. So uh, <laughs> I, I, I could have, yeah, I, I could have, I could have suggested a number of other billionaires to yeah, go through. Yeah, but, you know, Yugos are awesome and kind of hard to find. They're no? very hard to find See? because they turned into a pile of You rust. weren't easy to get to. But here we I are. Wasn't? No, I wasn't. <laughs> it would have taken one no, twenty-five dollars No, I like slipped into your DMs for like three weeks and just silence. I'm oh, sure, yeah. Well, okay, then you got me there because I don't check for those. <laughs> I figured. That's, no, no. It's just how old I am. Well, and you have some canless history, which we'll get to, which is super fun. But I do, yeah. Let's start uh, out with some early Joel facts. You were born overseas. Oh, yes. You were born in Rome. Yeah. When, oui. when, did, you, oui, oui. <laughs> when did you come to America and why? Two years ago. <laughs> and um, I, my visa had run out, and I had I had been in the Italian army for 25 years, yeah. so I you thought were... it was time to make my way in America. Well, and with like Trump's oh, immigration okay. stuff, you're like, this is the time to come to America. No, my my <laughs> parents, my mom is from uh, Vancouver, Canada. My dad is from Chicago, Illinois, and my dad uh, grew up in a uh, poor family in Chicago. And in high school, he went and saw the movie Roman Holiday. And um, he pointed to, the, he was like 18, and he pointed to the screen and went like, that's where I'm going. And he was a terrible student, just like me, and he made it happen. He went to Loyola University uh, in Chicago and then eventually made it to Rome through Loyola University Rome Center and became the Dean of Students because he, he, he manifested his destiny and, uh, and, and he met my mom who was a student so scandal and um, scandal. I mean, they, he would—he was like the student dean, so it wasn't like he was that much older. And um, and so they had three uh, three boys, and I was one of them. And 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 we moved we moved to uh, Mercer on Washington in like 1975. Uh, and I know the if there's anybody watching, I just said 1975. I might as well have said you know when Hamilton was alive. 
So, uh, yeah, were, they came, they came to Seattle when it was a, it truly was a sleepy little town with Boeing. You were three or four years old. You grew yeah. up, you grew up in Mercer Island. Uh, I, we moved to New Jersey for two years, uh, to, uh, outside of Philadelphia. And then, um, my parents realized that they loved the Northwest, even though it was not as cool as Rome at the time. <laughs> it's fair. And, uh, we moved back and then basically, you know, since I was like nine, I, I, you know, all my formative years were there, uh, in, or where you are. And now I'm in, of course I'm in Los Angeles, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, I got to see Seattle go from, a place that nobody cared about to uh, the coolest place on the planet. Okay, you so you went to high school on Mercer Island. Uh, yes, and Mercer then Island. you went to UW. I did, and I and people whenever I say, "Oh, hey, you went to UW, uh, good for you," and I would be like, "No, no, no, I got into UW at a time when they were accepting all sorts of life forms, <laughs> and uh, a lot of invertebrates were getting in." And I had a ter- I was a terrible student. I don't know how I got in. I- it was so bad that I took a math class worth zero credit at the University of Washington because I was flunking out of high school math that uh, when they look, my mom was like, what's going on here? It says you have a class worth nothing. She thought I was like joke, like screwing around. I was like, no, 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 that's so I can just get into college math. Uh, and so the teacher said to me, he was like, hey, you're failing this. I'm like, I know. And he goes, um, you're not going to take a degree with math, are you? I'm like, no, why would I do that? And <laughs> he goes, OK, good, because I'll pass you. Just don't ever take anything with math. I'm like, deal of the century. So he passed me. And but is it I, is it true, though, that you got recruited to, to row crew? I did. Maybe oh, I that's, mean, that's a big deal. I mean, UW is what the most storied crew organization in the world it is well they got a book they got that uh soon to be a movie starring joel McHale. oh yeah no they're gonna they're (laughs) gonna want a 48 year old joel McHale in there i'll play like the grandfather no i mean the the boys in the boat but even even now aren't they like the current national champions are always competing to be the national champions national champions in a row are they they? well i have a very dubious history because I, i quit after getting into a physical fight with the varsity crew. No way. Yeah. Did you uh, win? Well, it was two against 11. <laughs> and uh, me and a guy named Jason Riney, who is a lawyer for Microsoft and married um, a high school friend of mine, Suzanne Russell. And, uh, <laughs> and there was all these rules to the rowing and including if you made the freshman vote, they would shave your head and your eyebrows off. And then they would put that hair into a pillow into uh, and then they put that pillow into a display case with other hair pillows <laughs> from years past. So and gross. That, that doesn't sound like a serial killer at all. And uh, so, um, yeah, the, I, it, I didn't push a chair in properly or something. My theory was that for sports that they don't have a ton of. Uh, you know, observer, like, you know, fan, not fans, but, you know, like crowds watching them. They have to make it up with uh, hazing and rituals, which they did. And I, uh, I quickly got out of there and I don't know what those guys are doing. If they're watching, please dine at Canlis whenever you can. (laughs) All right. So our plan to shave our heads and put it in a pillow as a thank you gift. We'll scratch that. And your eyebrow. We take that off the wall. And your eyebrow. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Then you walked on to the UW football team yeah weren't you like a Uh, like a skinny tall kid how dare you i was you know pleasingly plump uh (laughs) no i was uh i was not but i'm pretty i like to call myself husky no uh i I was uh, i don't know i was like uh 220 pounds no way oh you were ripped I, well, I don't know if I was ripped, but I was getting there and then or getting heavy. And then I and then I joined the team and I had a, I was in a fraternity for a very brief period of time. But I met some really nice people uh, and the uh, football player said, come on out. And and they let you stay I, on the team. Were you good? Uh, was I good? No, I, I will go down <laughs> in history as the worst tight end in Husky history, which I will happily uh, carry that mantle. And uh, but it was really fun. And um, 
I was on scout offense all the time. The, the tight ends in front of me were Mark Bruner and Ernie Conwell. So they are Super Bowl winners and monster athletes. <laughs> and I was like a mascot. So I was more than happy to do that. Okay. I did very well on skit night, though. I nailed it. Skipped <laughs> a, a very popular among teammates, I'm sure. Oh, I was. Yeah, they're like, if you needed a skit, I was your man. Okay, first, first trivia question. Comparing the 1991. John Kemp. <laughs> Go ahead. It's Sorry. close. It's close. <laughs> Comparing the 1991 Washington Husky National Championship football team. Yeah. How many more wins did they have than the Seahawks of that same year? Well, that's a good question. question that that... The Seahawks were seven and nine. Oh, how many more wins? Yeah. Uh, they, they would have had six or seven more wins. Because they were? National champions. And how many losses did they have? Zero. Ladies and gentlemen, Joel McHale knows wow. his sports history. Wow. It's, it's encouraging hey, to th know. That he was good. He that, but you roots. weren't on that team, or you weren't even the mascot no, I, for that I, I was able to join two months later. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, we've I, peaked, and so now let's invite Joel McHale on. Yeah, you could say that I brought the whole thing down. Yeah. Uh, because Don yeah. James, you know, <laughs> Don, Don James, James left <laughs> two years later. There was, there was a whole sanctions there was some, there was some uh, inappropriate jobs and bribes. It's all worked out just fine. Okay, and then you uh, eventually you went on. You you were in theater sports and Pike Place Market. Wow. Yes. Right, which I was like the go-to date when I, I was in high school. I went to theater sports so many I times. I may have seen you. Yeah. Well, no, I graduated no, high school in '96, and I was dating, bringing dates to theater sports like '96, '97. Any chance? You would have seen, yeah, you would have seen me there because I was <laughs> no still doing that, and I had just gotten on. I was just on Almost Live, so, so I was doing both at once. And what was being on Almost Live like? Did that is that the moment where you're like, oh, I think this is what I want to do with my life is be an actor, comedian, or? No, I wanted to be an actor when I was like a, oof, like a fifth grader, or seventh grader. No way. And so, Oh yeah, I would, that's all I ever wanted to do. So all I did was theater all through high school and a lot, e and, and even while in college, while I was on the team, I was still doing theater sports. And uh, so I, I did that endlessly. So yeah, that's all I ever wanted to be. Um, so yeah, when I got on Almost Live, I couldn't believe it. My mom urged me to do an internship there. And I was like, I don't know. And she was like, do it. And I was like, it was a really good example of having a parent kind of push you. And I was like, I don't know what will happen. And then it was great because um, you know, like John Keister and Pat Cashman and Bill Staten, Nancy Guppy, Tracy Conway, and of course, Bob Nelson and Steve Wilson. Bob Nelson, who uh, is an Oscar nominee for Nebraska, they took right. me under their wing and were very, you know, like, let me screw up a lot because I'm super dyslexic and can't read teleprompters. Were there are there any like almost live sketches that ended up on the cutting room floor that you missed or like or, or what uh, what was it like working with some of those legends? Oh, I was in awe so much of the time, and they were so kind to take me under their wing and you know like let me screw up and and not and. There were some live sketches that were pretty, I was not great in. And so I, it was a really good way for, they, they, they basically babysat me for three, year, three years. And they were, they, I'm trying to think of sketches that, wow, I, a lot of my sketches should have wound up on the cutting room floor. Um, but uh, yeah, it was hard. It was always, John was always magical at writing a monologue. He would just kind of sit down for half an hour figure out some really dynamite jokes. We gave him other jokes. I mean, of course, other people submitted jokes, but he really put it together. And and then, of course, Pat was just right. the funniest person on the planet and and continues to be. And he was just, he was all, he was like, our, he was like Phil Hartman. And I say that not like the Seattle's version of Phil Hartman that, you know, if Pat had wanted to, he could have gone to SNL if he'd wanted. I'm trying to think of sketches that wound up on the, cutting room floor there was a lot that i wrote that never even got to the cutting room floor because they were not were, were the, people but, were wondering um, were a couple that they would know that he did write like are there a are, couple, are there a couple few... sketches that you did write people are asking online 
that are like some of your are favorites. People actually asking. No, uh, no, no. Jennifer Ingram has just said, Jennifer it's like, Ingram hey, has, what were his sketches? Yeah, which on almost like I don't know if she's testing him or if it was just like fandom. I don't know. Can figure out what's going on here. Oh, Jennifer. Yeah, uh, we were yeah. married for three years, so yeah, she's still pissed. <laughs> she's still pissed. <laughs> Ingram. Oh, the Ingram. Yeah, I called her the Ingram. And uh, no, I don't. Look, there's look with the comedy show. From what I have done, uh, things I've done, like most things end up not getting made, and then the things that get made, you know, they squeak through, and then hopefully. They work, uh, but I'm trying. I didn't. I'm look. I, that is a long time ago. A long time and ago. A, yeah. A lot of bottles of wine ago. So. Uh, okay. Let's let's, just say let's move to some. Everything worked perfectly. So I'm I'm a huge fan of the show. Um, wait, wait, don't tell me. So I have a couple more broader, Seattle, maybe even Canlis trivia questions here to test, the kind um, of. Salmonella. Yeah. Close. <laughs> Often. Uh, is it true? Well, uh, first of all, you're the you're you're a third generation McHale. To have dined at Canlis Restaurant, am I really? Is just go? Yes. No. Oh. When did you, you first got, dine here? I first dined there in uh, 1903. <laughs> no, didn't you uh, dine here as a little a, boy? It was just a. It was just a. It was just a very uh, humble logging camp at that point, right? <laughs> Uh, and then we hosted the Queen of Anne, uh, Queen Anne. She was great. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it was named no, for, No, you, right? you came here as, as a boy with your parents. Okay, so I came there. <laughs> oh, but wait. So then, oh, I, okay. Uh, so I came there as a boy with my friend and his parents oh. because there was no way my parents were paying for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they weren't paying for uh, you. You were to Roberto's Pizza on Mercer notes. Island a lot. No. Um, th so I went there when I was like 10, and this is or 12, 11. So this is like 80, 83 or 84. Yep. And um, it was the nicest restaurant I had ever been to by a mile. And I, I to that to this day, I still see it like going to like Ferrell's or like the 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 what is it the Fun Forest where I was just like, what is this <laughs> this magical forest. place where people <laughs> like like it was so like the view and people are dressed up and this food and these there's there's flames coming out of the steaks and. Um, that, they were like, well, and so you like. You that's our famous uh, flaming tableside steak. <laughs> yes, you literally, you, I saw, you pour gasoline no. on <laughs> you. Yeah. We have aspired to be compared on to fire our entire steak. career. So I, I feel it. like this and is then the pinnacle people just right now. dove into yeah. the steak and began ripping it out and ran back to their tables. Yeah. And no, we've so been waiting to be. To this day, this I do not. So I, then we, so, but my, my, my mother's, my mother's, my wife's mother, they would go there. There, they would go there in the '60s. So they, it was their spot that they would go to, and uh, we then threw my uh, my mother-in-law. We rented the upper part of your uh, restaurant and threw my mother my mother-in-law's 65th birthday there, which we had like 50 people, and it was uh, it was just I was That's so yeah to, to be able to do that. And then, of course, um, we ate flooded the place because I left the the sink on in the bathroom by accident. Yeah. And that, uh -huh. that cost, accident. Yeah, that was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of damage. <laughs> okay, ready? Question. Yeah. My grandfather, Canlis founder Peter Canlis, was notorious for claiming that he dated famous people. Oh. Whether he did or not, there was an Instagram, so we really can't be sure. But of the three people I'm about to list, okay. he said he claimed he dated two of them. Yeah. Which two? Was it Rita Hayworth, Sophia Loren, or Nancy Guppy? Oh, it's definitely Nancy's one of them. She got around. Everyone knew her reputation. <laughs> uh, everyone knows. Nancy, if you're watching, I know you are. You watch all my stuff. You know. You dated. Uh, she, she was like dating your dad, JP Patches, Wayne Cody. You and sound a little jealous. Did, did you. <laughs> Missed your chance for some time with Nancy? Well, she was a little older than me, yeah. but I, that didn't mean I wasn't dating older women. Uh, you know, I made a couple passes at Gene Anderson in my day. 
And uh, <laughs> look, I, Rita Hayworth or Sophia Loren, you're so he he dated yes. Sophia Loren and Rita Hayworth. That's correct. Sophia Loren was just popping in from Italy. Yes. No. Or he, was he was dated Pete both running? Sophia Loren and Rita Hayworth, not Nancy. So when you heard these stories, were you like? I feel like we were like well, he, he I'm was first the Joe McHale of the '50s. My dad is adopted, so that that says a lot. I got none of my grandfather's genes in me, uh, so uh, I'm not living up to his fame of dating famous people. He, he was the Joel McHale well. of the '50s, my grandfather, <laughs> and so um, or maybe wow. he was more of a Jeff Winger, but uh, he was more uh, of a Jeff Winger. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. he um, dated. So he was like a game show host. Yeah. <laughs> A very handsome one. Uh, okay, well, next question. Okay. As you look around Canlis today, yes, there are subtle references and appearance of a Canlis family friend, John Wayne. That part is true. But how my grandfather used to spend time with the Duke has been challenged. Only By one. Who? What very, son of a bitch? Well, we're gonna find out. Only one of these statements is true. Is it a? Peter used to hang out with John Wayne in the San Juans on John's boat, the Wild Ghost, the Wild Goose. Peter used okay. to do the cooking, at least partially naked. Is it B, John Wayne was a big cannabis smoker because it was legal in Canada, and in 1959, my grandfather sold John Wayne his first grow light. Or C, we made this whole thing up. We needed to use a college dorm room poster of the Duke to cover up a hole in the wall above our urinal caused by all the classmates.com employees pounding their foreheads in the wall during the dot-com bust of 2001. Hmm. Well, as we know, John Wayne was a big user of the internet. So he was all over MySpace when it came out in 1961. Absolutely. Uh, so wait, are you saying, look, the San Juan thing sounds very plausible. And the fact that you also went and Pete, Grandpa Pete, cooked naked? Partially naked. I mean, who doesn't? How, don't you cook with your, just, you know? Oh, I always put my what? balls right on the counter no. when I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're just kind of an apron-only family. Is that not how you guys do it? Uh, look, Los Angeles is a very stuffy, conservative town, and we're very, <laughs> wait. Because it sounds like if your if Pete was just wearing an apron, then he definitely sold them some weed, <laughs> definitely sold them a grow light, and they got super high and were floating around the San Juans. The correct answer <laughs> is uh, A is true, and B very well might have been, <laughs> knowing <laughs> knowing our grandfather. Okay, next question. Next Most question. locals are tired about hearing about the Seattle freeze. The Seattle the, freeze? Yeah, you know the Seattle freeze. The, um, You've been gone too it's long. It's nuisance here. It's, here. it's this yeah. idea. It happened ever, after you left. It's the idea that uh, when p new people move to Seattle, we're like a cold people who are hard to get to know, and we're not very friendly. And it's like hard to break into Seattle culture. I want to know the city. This would have been a lot funnier had you like, known. If you move to New York, people are just like, hey, what's up? Buddy? Where are you from? Come on over for dinner. That does that. The Seattle freeze is a thing. It's like, a, it's like one of it's our a, It's a thing. thing. It's a post-Joel thing, though. Yeah, I think it's, I I think it's, it's newish. Anyway, it was going to yeah. be funny, uh, but... It's funny. Keep going. Okay. The, it's the idea that Seattle people tend to coldly ignore those who move here from here from out of state. All right. I will Question. say... Oh, no. Uh, as anecdotally, in literally 1991, I remember the Seattle Weekly had on the cover Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse, and it just said, like, here we come. And it was like, get ready for California, because that's when this wave started. And I knew fr friends, like good people that were, when they'd see a California plate, they would like, dry, like speed up and get in front of them and be yeah. dicks. Yeah, and it's a thing. So, so the it question was very pronounced back then. Did the stereotype come from A, Los Angeles, B, yes. Los Angeles, or C, the greater Los Angeles area? <laughs> mm. I am gonna say, oof. Um, 
downtown Los Angeles. But like, but what's it like living there? Like, do you like Los Angeles? Do you miss Seattle? You gotta miss Seattle a little bit. No, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my, we miss it because uh, my wife and I both were indoctrinated with the color green and blue, and so just coming into Seattle, no matter if the weather's horrible, seeing all those green trees, and hills, and seeing all the water literally makes us kind of more relaxed. But now, how can the freeze still be going? Because Seattle, between Starbucks and Amazon and Microsoft and every other successful company coming to Seattle, I feel like nobody is, I remember nobody's like well, originally from there. Apparently, well, I'm originally from here. I was born here. Well, I And I'm a well, dick to everybody. Well, with a haircut like that and that shirt, you can't. You have to be very For defensive. For the record, my <laughs> wife cut my hair. We did a community college class with Rudy's, and she cut my hair live on YouTube, and now you're just insulting my wife. Well, um, wait, your wife did her first haircut on you? Yes. Oh, I can't believe it wasn't the perfect cut. I'm kidding. I'm just picking anything out. Uh, I'm going to no, move. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to change subjects here. We basically have the same haircut and same facial hair, except you're 10 years younger. A lot of discussions around the I'm patchy six beards, years by younger, the way. Just yeah. the I just record. love how you have your, uh, like, your Ed McMahon off to the side. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, like, okay. Oh, well, oh, I, well, how come you don't have an Ed McMahon off to the side? That's what, that's what I want to know. I, I feel like, you know, I feel like you should have one. It's just, it would be but right. Can you hear, Mark? It would be right if you did. Can he feels him? like I should have an Ed McMahon. Yeah, he's like, where's yours? Yeah. He looked, oh, he's piggybacking on my joke, taking half the joke and saying I should have one. <laughs> I'm the one That's who what Ed does. In the first yeah. Okay. What yeah, we right. uh, for this next for this next questions, uh, I'm just gonna get changed. It's a little chilly in here. I'm gonna I'll, ha I'll, ha I'll ask you. To oh, you're are you putting on a costume? Come on, come on. Yeah, there it is, the anus flag. When you heard uh, when you heard we were doing community. You sent community community season six hoodies. Yes, those are uh, for my I, whole I team. None of those left. Which was so cool, and we wear them with pride. Uh, six seasons. The movie's coming. I'm sure. Any day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, we are just. We approved the four hundred million dollar budget. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's being. We've just gotten. Uh, uh, what's his name? Robert Downey Jr. has decided that yeah. he will it, well, be a poster. I, oh, I thought he was going to play Jeff Winger. He tried. He yeah. auditioned. He didn't get it. <laughs> Question. Did your heart beat faster kissing Allison, kissing Gillian, or singing karaoke with the Dean? Oh, definitely the karaoke. Uh, because I'm a huge Seal fan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kiss from a Rose is something I've sang out very loudly in my own shower. And so, but for that was a real thrill for Jim Rash because he got to sing with me and he, <laughs> he still counts that as one of the greatest moments in his acting career. Oscar winner Jim Rash, by the way. Oscar winner Jim Rash. Oscar winner. Um, no, the, the, the talent on that cast is legendary. Everybody except for Donald. Well, I was, that was my next question. What's up with Donald's career? Do you think he peaked on Community? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he made all his money on Community. Yeah, I was, I was thinking. And, uh, no, but, for, but like ahead. speaking of Donald, do you, do you love him more in the role of actor, musician, or writer? Why do I have to pick on this? Why, why? I mean, some people are like, what do you like doing? Hosting, stand-up, or acting better? I'm like, what, what, what is the universe that we have to go like, sorry, hosting, acting is my favorite thing. Uh, <laughs> look, Donald, if Donald decided to take up the accordion, it would be great. And um, look, we all knew that he was like the most talented person. We all, I, you can ask anybody in the cast because he, and I, the, uh, the, Donald is so, he's the fun, one of the, if not the funniest person I've ever interacted with. And then on top of that, he has all those other skills. It would be like, you guys run the best restaurant in Seattle. Oh, and I just happened to build Stradivarius violins on yeah, my own, I don't, right? That's, yeah. So um, that's that like, so when Donald, yeah, he, while we were all screwing around, he sat on his laptop with earbuds in 
and worked out all his beats no and way. was making his albums. And then he'd be like, oh, let's go have, let's go play. And then we'd do some silly bit. But you have to keep in mind, like, I was 35 or 34 when I got that role. Or 36, 34, and 35. And he was like 23. So right. uh, so he was, you know, like, I don't know. I'm sure when you were 23, you were probably, I, I, when I was 23, I was like, pony keg or full size keg? gotta figure this out so um yeah so he, it, the, the, what's so great is that he is truly a kind person and is a normal person and uh and so when you when a cool person like that becomes that you know like it, it works out really well and they get it's it makes me so happy because there's a lot of there's dicks obviously in every profession but when the good guys win it's really cool it's really Thanks. cool so a, a question about what it was really like to working with Chevy Chase is is my timing off on uh, this? Or, no, that, or, or we, that's great. Is it Jermaine? What, yeah. You want to answer that? What was it really like working with Chevy Chase? The audience wants to know. Wh who in the audience? <laughs> Chevy is he? Is he <laughs> logged in? Oh yeah, Chevy's logged in for sure. Oh, he's yeah, an right. avid follower. This of is ours. a guy named Fred, oh. for the record. A guy named Fred. I don't Fred. doubt that he. Chevy's probably eaten at Canlis, I would think, right? Uh, it's possible. Not in our, not in the last fifteen not years. That, not that I know of. Yeah. Have you guys ever been starstruck by somebody who walked in? Uh, sure. Nah, yes, sure. Who? I mean, as a rule, we don't ever talk about people that dine here. But why? Ye it's not cool. Because well, we got in trouble. <laughs> oh. We once got in big trouble. Um, a famous member of a a band dined here. And our general manager went on the radio the next day and said, yeah, this world famous musician was in last night with his wife and it was awesome and it was so fun. And then his uh, wife called and said, uh, dad, that wasn't me. And that didn't go well. And the, mm -hmm. uh, we learned a lesson about talking about people that dine here. Right. Uh, so we, we keep their that. privacy a Not thing. Trustworthy. However, if you come, we'll we'll we will we're gonna we, we're gonna live tweet your entire dining experience. Should definitely tell. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, tell I need the press weekly. Uh, maybe I'm just gonna take a to guess them. on who that was. Um, ooh, this is uh, hard. I'm gonna say it was members of Color Me Bad from 1991. That is not correct. It, <laughs> no. That is not correct. Uh, no, but Darn really, uh, what was or, or another question like what? Well, which? Che oh yeah, Chase. Oh, I can feel, well, Chev, you know, with Chevy, I'm Chevy. Uh, you know, he we got this living legend to be on the show, and we've we've always I've always said like in, in so many interviews like he hated the hours. There was no, and he will absolutely agree with me and. Because they he were super it, long. Like, you guys were there all the time, right? Yeah, because we were shooting a movie every week. And that at that point, comedies being shot were all being shot like like The Office, which were incredibly effective, obviously. And, and that sort of documentary style also lended itself to very sh much shorter days because you're not setting up, you know, movie shots. And we were we were making a movie. If you look at the shots, I mean, Justin Lin, who does all the... Fast and Furious and the Star Treks. He was one of our directors. And of course, the Russo brothers directed yeah. tens of them. And so uh, they, we were making movies, which is just, you know, for yeah. 22 minutes of comedy, we would be we would never get done on time. So and, and Chevy definitely did not like those hours and definitely made that known. And, and you know, when he was on, he could he could he na he would nail it. Uh, but yeah, there, there's no doubt that I think the the people know that it you know he didn't want to be there do you have a can it. of chevy's sperm on your dresser i have that is literally uh <laughs> it is eight feet below me in the uh, i can i can go get it i've got it I would, I would never give that <laughs> you away. have it that's amazing okay that's uh, awesome. it's not it's not his it's pierce's oh of course <laughs> naturally uh, uh which which one of the actors that you worked with was most like their character like in oh, real everyone life always uh, boy, it was it you. Was it you? Uh, people always <laughs> thought it was me, but I'm like, I'm married with children, um, and I'm not. I'm not running around, and and uh, so boy, uh, yeah, I would. Pro it was probably me because I I was a, I am a person who can't stop commenting, and um, 
you know, I'm a typical white man. I have emotion, you know, I have, a, I'm emotionally stunted. So I, that, in that case, I was exactly like Jeff Winger. Uh, but like, uh, no, you know what? I'm trying to think. It definitely wasn't Jim or Danny Pudi. Because uh, Danny Pudi was, you know, playing uh, someone on the spectrum and, 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 uh, and should have been given a thousand Emmys. A because thousand. Of- uh, because his his form- performances were not appreciated for what he pulled off, and and uh, so uh, yeah, I would say, and then Jim Rash, of course, is not like the dean, especially. <laughs> like, Jim is like this super stylish, very very fit uh, dude, and no, when he when he takes his shirt off in a few of the episodes, it's ripped. like, holy crap, he's ripped. Like what's going on? Yeah, yeah, no. Jim is Jim is like he's got that triathlete's body yeah. where he he and he also when when you have him over for dinner he'll be like, I'll have an ounce of halibut and a steamed bean and like a steamed piece of broccoli and that's all he'll eat and then have like a Michelob Ultra. So uh, <laughs> he's, he's splurges a lot. Uh, no, but I'm I'm trying to think of. Yeah, that would I mean it was definitely not like, you know, Ken wasn't like his, I mean, Ken is. Well, I'm amazed the, you've gone this long in an interview and not insulted Ken. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> anyway, Ken is the worst doctor in history. <laughs> Thank you. Also, if you at home don't listen to the Darkest Timeline podcast, it's so, yeah, so fun. We're going to start back up now, now that Ken's, Ken has two hit shows on the air right now. Right. And he's taped those. And uh, so I think we're going to start it back up again. That's uh, I have to go shoot something else, but um, but we're we're gonna get back to okay, it. Okay, when you were filming the paintball episodes, are you taking real paintball fire? Do you have welts after the filming? Uh, no, because <laughs> it looks so real. So I know it did. Um, there was a couple like when we actually got hit, we'd have a guy standing lit. Like you see your camera guy right there behind you. Um, I'm sure that guy is. Pro- Hi, uh, I think I don't know whom that is. Oh, that's uh, Ib too. Uh, so they were standing just off camera with a low paintball, like the as you know with paintball. Oh, so like they, weak they, ones. Right there, and then when you get hit, they would be. Oh. It wasn't so bad. Um, you know what? I lied. No, because I remember. A vet going, does it hurt? And I just lied to her and said, <laughs> not at all. And then they lit her up and she was like, why did you do that? I was like, I'm not going to tell you in advance that it hurts. Uh, so I didn't, I'm trying to think if I ever got nailed. We had all these, the, some of them had to be shot extra fast. So uh, for, I, for, because they wanted the splatter to, yeah. be, to be more dramatic. So we didn't get hit with those. Cause I've been hit before with paintballs hard. If you've, I'm sure experienced it as well, and it's I'm, no fun. But. It's it's, but it's what makes it great, is the pain. Yeah, you know what? Like, it makes because you there's fear. Like, yeah, instead yeah. of laser tag, where you're just like, whatever, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm just sweating in this thing that somebody else was wearing. <laughs> uh, Mark, do you have another question? Well, I, yeah, we we got a couple of questions here. So um, a few people, you know, yeah, people are binging in quarantine. They're going back and, and watching Community. Curious what he's watching. Are you binging any any current shows right now? Like what what are you hooked on? Oh, well, I'm I'm binging the Canless YouTube channel. Definitely. <laughs> Naturally. Um no, I don't watch as much as you think. I watch a lot of football and a lot of news and I watch forensic files on HLN. <laughs> Uh, I, I can pretty much, I, it's my, I've seen every forensic files ever. Um, but the shows that I've watched during quarantine, the boys is on Amazon prime oh, is dark. It, I, I, I get so happy when I'm watching it and I rewind it. I love it. Wow. I love it so much. And Jack Quaid is a revelation. Uh, of course, Anthony Starr, who plays Homelander, is amazing. Oh, he's just so dark. Wait, aren't you, weren't you cast as a superhero or something that's coming up? Yes. Last year, I was a guest star on this show called Star Girl, and I played Star Man. <laughs> and uh, I think it's been announced, but I'm going. I'm going back to shoot more. Uh, more Star Man. More Star Girl. I play Star Man. Right. So, uh, 
that's what Breck Bassinger, who's an amazing young actor, is Stargirl. And then Luke Wilson, who, you know, it's Luke Wilson. And then heard of him. Um, and he's tremendous. And then Amy Smart plays her mom. And, uh, what are your powers? Yeah. That's on. C- uh, I have a golden staff. <laughs> What's so funny? I'm so curious. No, that's Brett. great. That's. I mean, it's great. Yeah. Uh, no, that that's really fun because I got to get in that super suit and they hang me on wires and I'm swinging that thing around and it's everything. It's that was like they they were like, you want to do this? It's gonna take time. And I'm like, yes, I'll do that in a heartbeat. That's awesome. I, I got to play a superhero and actually because i'm going back i've been cutting weight i've been eating hardly anything so i can fit back into that suit it's it's fun it's a well you can go out to dine with jim rash yeah jim and i can go <laughs> out a split a carrot <laughs> okay well let's start to, okay we're we're pretty much almost out of time uh, is there mark is there one more a couple of, uh let's see so one woman i was just i'm just curious Hi, Joel. I'm a huge fan, and my favorite line was your opening for a concert at the Moor. Do you remember what you called Steve Poole? It's, it's yes. Going way back. A vampire. Yes. I call, I call him a vampire. Steve Poole's a vampire. Opened with that line, apparently. A uh, few people want to know a uh, favorite dive bar in Seattle. Like, what, what, back in the day, was there a place you would haunt after a show or something like that? Is there any... Was there like you mentioned a lot of wine? Kegs well, here's earlier. why I have to say why I called Steve Poole a vampire. I also called Gene Anderson and Dan Lewis and Jeff Renner. So this was 2000 and like six or seven, and this is when they were still on the air. And I, I think they're all retired now, but they had all been on the air for like 30 years, forever. And I remember thinking these people don't age and they must be feasting on the blood of mortals. So I did like 10 minutes on Steve Poole and Dan Lewis, um, you know, killing and drinking blood. Um, so the dot, so I, I used to hang out. I, I, I didn't, it wasn't necessarily a bar, but in high school, I hung out at the dog house all the time, dog house. Mm-hmm. uh, which opened in 1934 and closed in, 2002 oh. you know, like way back when where, uh, where, where was it the dog house yeah i don't know it that was right near um now now this is closed uh near the elephant car wash yeah oh okay like in danny uh, triangle area yeah and then like we would oh man i mean in, in like the the five spot the five point yeah uh and when it was there a few times the rendezvous on First Avenue, which now wow, that sign it's... is that rendezvous sign, I believe, or no, the the Frontier Room is that that's not there anymore. Yeah, uh, Frontier, in, in Belltown, I, I think it there. closed. I yeah, I think know. it closed, which was also right down the street from the Queen City Grill, which I could not afford. Uh, but the Frontier Room was one we went to a lot, and then we'd go to Cooper's right off of Lake City Fun. and Murphy's. Uh, in Wallingford, um, boy. Oh, and then of course, because I did theater sports, uh, right across the alley is the uh, something room. It's still, it's been there for now 20 pompous two room. years. Across from the alley? Come on, help me out. What's it called? What it the pompous room, man. The what? what, the, what? the pump room? Is it the, no. no. The alibi room? The no, alibi. they moved. The alibi room. Alibi, the alibi. yeah. Alibi. Um, we asked your favorite. Yeah. You gave us eleven. So I was just yeah. Was just so so that was that. where you drank Mondays. What about the rest of the week? <laughs> well, in course. the morning we would go to uh, we would go to uh, Maze on Finney Ridge and just get wasted up there. No, uh, do you remember Maze on Finney Ridge? Does that ring a bell? No. No. I am naming things that closed. But so like I long. left. So I left Seattle at sixteen, to and do I was what? And I was gone for twelve years. Isn't that crazy? I went away to high. I went away to high school, and then I lived in Europe for a while. Then I went away to college in New York, and then I joined the Air Force and lived all over the world. So I missed a a, a chunk of of Seattle That's life. Way more interesting than <laughs> me going like, yeah, there was a place down the street that served a beer and a shot for three dollars. Wow. Can you? What did you do for the Air Force? Oh, it's so bad. Uh, my first job. I ran the fitness center. (laughs) 
Why are you laughing? That's really important. Hey, you important. know what? Uh, yeah, that's no, right. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. No. Veterans Day is coming up. You remember my service because I, I well, kept yeah. people fit. Um, I remember when you were like, hey, the lat machine is broken. <laughs> Don't get on there. No, but it's, it's crazy. I know... Uh, I had the 4 a.m. shift because I was the lowest ranking person. This is in 2001 in Alaska, which where I stationed first. And so I was the only, and all the officers live off base. Yeah. And But I was on base because I had the 4 a.m. shift. But during 9-11, uh, we, you know, we went into DEFCON 3 and things got really intense. And I was the yeah. only one from my squadron on base. And they locked the base down for several days. So I had like a battlefield promotion to being actually in charge of something. Uh, and it was, it was pretty intense, actually, as a 20, 21 year old kid to be in the war room in that crisis with two and three star generals. So it was quite a cool experience. I went from there to running a dining hall. We dropped kitchens out of airplanes. That was cool. And then I worked for, oh. Air, I worked with I Air like Force One. Like with the generals, they were like, canless, what do you think, supersets? What do you think if we if we if we go like super heavy on a Tuesday, should we take a day off or should we? <laughs> That's right. We just, yeah. Uh, wait. So you were like in the gym and then 9-11 hit and they're like, <clears throat> you'll be. Over no, here. I, I had this moment where uh, we were watching the, 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 the guy in charge of North America was was lifting weights. <laughs> Um, we call him the president. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, sorry, he was NORCOM. Uh, I don't, right. It's been 20 years since I was in the Air Force. And he, he was the highest ranking general, like within many thousands of miles. And I go to him, I'm like super scared because I'm this nothing lieutenant. And I say, uh, sir, uh, there's been an attack, we think, on these buildings. And we we're all kind of scared. Not what and he's like, it's OK, don't worry about it. Let me know what happens. And then, as you know, an hour later, or however long it was, the, the Pentagon w was attacked. And I'm like, well, this sounds worth interrupting the general for as he's lifting yeah. weights. And I go to him, and I had this moment that seemed scripted for television. I said, sir, they've hit the Pentagon. And uh, he gives me this look, and I'll never forget it, and he runs out. He didn't get changed. And not joking, his face was on CNN about nine minutes later, in his workout clothes, sweaty, because we had to throw up F-15s because a Chinese airliner was coming at us with their, uh, their radio silence not working, and we thought it was an attack. And so we threw up airplanes to take it down, and I'm in the war room during this. It was something. All to say, we're here to interview Joel McHale so, on Can Seattle History. I've, I've got <laughs> Did Mark join the Air Force too? Uh, yeah, Mark was also in the Air Force. He was in special ops. Like it's. This restaurant career is, is a bit of a it's, it's a bit of a, a turn okay, I have for three us. questions. Sorry. Joel can pick his favorite. Three questions, okay, final, so and, and then we're done. With shotgun the, these out. You can answer whatever you want. Enough so, of the special ops. So yeah. one, we, we can't talk about it. So one question, uh, <laughs> He'll have to you know, you. is just, and I don't, besides Cowboy, which was your favorite animal from The Great Indoors, the next question is, hey, we're all on Zoom. You've kind of used to a camera in your face. Any tips for us as we as we try to engage and then the third question is around your faith in the film industry. You can go any direction You got here. three options there. I got all kinds of stuff on the chat right now. Well, of course, Cowboy, my dog that I got on The Great Indoors. And hey, whoever asked that question, thank you for remembering <laughs> The Great Indoors. <laughs> One season and done. Um, Did, uh, are, are, are there hoodies with just like a number one right here? <laughs> uh, there wasn't. I think... There's a mug, and the, the name has been <laughs> scraped off. Uh, I do remember the number. Of, I was bit by a bear on that uh, show, right. which, and then, uh, and that hurt. Like, for real? Yeah, we held this baby bear, and I was supposed to give a speech, but the thing, if you, uh, if you hold a bear, the bear believes it's going to be uh, killed. And uh, so the bear was not happy to be held like this because the bear thinks it's gonna be carried off and eaten. Wow. So while I'm rushing through this speech, it bit me and I was wearing three layers and it, it broke skin. And um, so I was like, maybe we put the bear in a place that doesn't think it's being, you know, it's, it's worried. Um, and then they want me to pick up this river otter that was eating chicken and just smashing the bones down with his teeth and eating the bones 
And I'm like, I am not picking up a river otter. <laughs> I was like, you can do whatever you want, but I'm not getting What's near them. What's doing eating they, chicken? It was two of them, and they were terrifying. Uh, what was the other question? Well, we got, we, so now I've got more coming in. There's One was a, about your faith in the film industry, if you want yeah, to go there. Oh. Is, is it hard to, to have, be a man of faith and a man of film? Now, everyone is like, isn't that hard? I was like, uh, no, I, you'd be amazed at the number of people that go to church here and synagogues and all. That, all 99% of the people who work in the film industry are super cool and 1% are the worst. And so they make it more bad for everybody. <laughs> but the case everyone. You have free will to do what you want. You can, you can say yes or no. And right. so, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it's no, it's no problem. And yeah. And so Tom Cruise and I hang out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's Seahawks, a prediction. And uh, Seahawks, a prediction. Go. I think the defense is going to turn around, and I think uh, we're going to go all the way. And I know wow. he's like, you can't say that. And I was like, uh, our offense is unreal. And a little bit of tinkering with the defense. And uh, I, I, what I hate is that when we lose a game, people go, well, that's it. And I just, I can't stand it. So we're six and two. We're doing just great. And people are like, well, they lost to the Cardinals. Well, the Cardinals lost this week. So, and look yeah. what happened to the, ten look what happened to the Buccaneers. So yeah, Pittsburgh looks really good. I will definitely say that. Uh, but I'll, I'll say Pittsburgh and Seattle in the Super Bowl so we can avenge our, our, uh, nice. our loss in the Super Bowl way back when. We were that. robbed. We literally, <laughs> the only time a referee has written a letter apologizing, people are like, can't blame the refs. I'm like, in this case, in we this, can. In this case, you can. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I felt terrible. I was like, yeah, we had that game. So, anyway. Well, uh, Joel, thank you. Uh, or no, I, uh, I hope I didn't Brita this interview. Uh, it's my <laughs> first time uh, interviewing really? a, a, a legit uh, game show Look, host. Even though... <laughs> You're, the lighting and the camera and the room behind you looks like you've been kidnapped, and this is a tape proving that you're still alive. Um, and you, I know that you, you're, you're in a super fancy restaurant, but you're like, let's definitely get the cardboard boxes. Yo, I've been up. blinking Morse code this whole time. <laughs> and let's definitely shoot a light that's going directly into the camera, because I can see it off of your right shoulder. Yeah, yeah. We're, and, we're, we're restaurant people. We're not film production people. No one knows what we're, we're doing right now. In fact, uh, tune in tomorrow. What's the class tomorrow? Uh, we have, uh, we're we doing have, a soba. No, we have Soma, Cooking with Chef. Yeah, we, we're, we have, we're doing, yeah, super fun. We have fun. a candle making class coming we're doing, up. We're doing a class called, uh, Double Dipping and Sipping, which is making candles, making fondue, and drinking wine. Dad Magic and Dad oh. Jokes is coming up. I'm doing up. a show called Dad Magic and Dad Jokes. We have um, a magician coming to teach me magic for, to show, and then I'm going to teach him really bad dad jokes. And we got to love, I, That's Double all. dipping and sipping sounds like somebody chewing tobacco into a cup and then making someone drink it, but, <laughs> which I will do if you like. Uh, I will say, uh, and I think there is no other restaurant that has been as creative and as innovative as you guys. I don't think it even comes close to what you guys have done. Mm. No, or is crazy. Now, what's going to happen if this vaccine like works great and then, then, all, but it's like too, too bad. You guys have already started this community college. You better keep the shows going. <laughs> no, oh, but we're, we're about to build this whole new idea in our parking lot, and uh, let's hope the vaccine doesn't come out too fast because we're like, ah! no. Let's <laughs> no, hope it does. No, we are excited. We are we're ready. Bring it on, please. Uh, we'll we fine. are, we are ready to be a restaurant again. Go back what to if, work. It, what if, like, you could incorporate the vaccine into, you know, like the Chateaubriand dish? Yeah, totally. Or just like a shot. Like we give you a syringe and a shot. It's like a first course. <laughs> That'd be like. Mm. It's like an amuse bouche. <laughs> I like. I I would show up for that. Okay, uh, I, but I I'm not kidding. I'm not. I know that I'm. Not, I'm not trying to kiss your ass. But I don't, because you know, there's all sorts of restaurants doing all sorts of creative, cool stuff. But nobody is like, we're turning into a beach. Now it's a community college. <laughs> now it's NORAD headquarters. You know, that's not. It's not. It's not the typical thing. And uh, that's that's why you know Seattle's. That's why you guys, you know, that's well, why you guys are who you Thanks are. for the support. Uh, thanks for I've being, done nothing. I've thanks agreed for being a Seattle you. guy to your core. 
I'll see you on Card Shocks, which is actually really great late at oh, night to like fall asleep to. Um, meaning it like, you know, like, <laughs> you mean it like that. <laughs> 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 it is not what I meant. Actually, I, really no, like, sometimes my wife Did and I, like, the end of the night, we, we have three little kids. Like, let's put on a show that's what? like relaxing. What do you do? And just, like, it's show. funny. Just you don't have to see the end, it's enjoyable oh. the whole time. Let's put on visual ambience, shall we? No problem. Just like, uh -huh, it's not. Uh -huh. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you. Joel, uh, thank watch, you. Uh, let's see. Uh, I have a new movie coming out called Happily, so look for that. You have there a new movie go. called Happily? Yes. What, how's it going to be released? Um, I'm assuming like over theaters? video. Like theaters? Can't No. No one's going to theaters. Oh. I, I'm not, you know what? I'm not sure. It was just announced today, and we shot it a year and a half ago. So I was like, oh, great. It's finally coming out. OK, great. Oh, this just it. out. It's new. Check it out. It's brand new. We're breaking the news right now. Breaking news. <laughs> breaking <laughs> news. First time I've said it. First, first thank time. you again. Such a joy to just talk to you. Thank, thank you. you. First of all, I'd like thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mark. Thank you to your incredible staff. And thank you to the 37 people that actually accidentally tuned in. Yeah. <laughs> 38. I almost mailed the joke. I couldn't, I couldn't land it. <laughs> Have a great yeah. night, Joel. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Good. Good. I'll see you, Dad. Dad yeah. Magic. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Am I signing out? Yeah, I guess. Just hit the know. red button. Oh, wait. Hold you, on. No, you hang up first. <laughs> and I no, did it. no, you hang up first. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And done. <laughs>
care. Next up, we have ROC-12's request for Cry Me a River. And that could mean either the JT song or the jazz standard. I'm guessing it's the jazz standard, so I'm going to play that next. Followed by Sarah's request for anything Beyonce. And thanks for all the new chats and requests coming in. I'll get to those when I get to those. Thank you.
again that was Crimey a river i forgot what key i was in at the end there <laughs> a lot of times if you've noticed i sort of force myself to change keys mid-song just so i don't get stuck in a rut with how i improvise on stuff because each key kind of fits your hand a little different it forces you to do different things so we have sarah's request for beyonce followed by May's request for Levine Rose. 